On this episode of the Nationwide Real Estate Mastery Podcast, we sat down with James Brown to uncover exactly how to successfully do lease options in today's market. Welcome to the Nationwide Real Estate Mastery Podcast, where we provide actionable steps to help you get your first or next real estate deal. Now, during this episode, you're going to discover exactly how to successfully do lease options in today's market. Now, for those of you who are new to the show, my name is Sean Young, today's host, and I love all things real estate. Now, before I introduce you to our incredible guest speaker today, I want to make a request that if at any point in this show, you like what you're hearing, please give us a thumbs up or subscribe to the show so that you never miss an episode. And make sure to take a look in the description of this episode as we've packed it with thousands of dollars in free resources. Now today, we have the privilege to learn from a man who was crushing it helping investors put together lease option deals all over the country. Prior to his career in real estate, he was a graphic designer for 25 years. But all that changed when he was about to turn 50 and decided that he was not on track for his financial goals. I would describe our next guest as someone who was great at connecting with people through empathy. I want to introduce you all to the one, the only, James Brown. James, thanks for being a guest on today's show. We're excited to have you. Thanks, Sean. This is going to be awesome. Indeed, indeed. Now, James, before we dive into the steps on, on how you're helping folks crush it with lease options, can you tell our listeners just a, a brief background about yourself and where you come from and how did you get started in real estate? Yeah. You know, my, my dad was early on, like I think back in college was like, Hey, you should go buy a duplex, live in one side, run out the other. And I didn't do that. I wish I would have, <laughs> but uh, I did buy a house with my brother, you know, right, right out of college. And uh, that kind of started the ball rolling and, I built equity in my own primary, um, but I just kind of sat on the sidelines for years, just didn't connect that I needed to get, get things going until, like you said, I, I was about to turn 50 and I'm like, uh-oh, like I need to change some things. And I was doing okay, you know, with my graphic design business, but um, yeah, so I, I was actually talking to a friend of mine. He's like, hey, check out the Bigger Pockets podcast. And I was like, Oh, what's that? You know, so that kind of started things going and learning and jumping onto other podcasts like yours and and networking and reading, just hiring coaches. So it's been a, a crazy few, <laughs> I guess about six years now. So okay, okay. Pod, wow, that is that is a quite a beginning story. Now, James, let me ask you this, man. Um, you know, a lot of people they jump into this business and, you know, they, they come out here and their, their faces to, or their influencers to folks out here and they seem to have success right off the jump. Was that your case or, or did you struggle a little bit before you found success? Oh yeah, definitely had some ups and downs and, and a pr pretty big pause while I was just getting my head around all the different ways to make money in, in real estate mm -hmm. and, and taking note of like where people get tripped up, you know? So yeah, I definitely probably two or three years before I took any real action, okay. you know. That makes sense. I, I definitely understand that. We, we hear that a lot because, like you say, there's so many different, like, niches, so to speak. And, and you don't know that until you actually start getting involved with the business. Then you're like, oh, my goodness, I thought this was all just like one thing. <laughs> but there's so many different uh -huh. exit strategies and, and uh, strategies out there that, uh, you know, you can kind of get lost up in, you know, in the sauce a little bit. Now, guys, yeah. before, before yeah, we got, oh, no, go ahead. Go right into it, James. Yeah, I was just going to say that everybody has something that kind of draws them and you have to find out what that is, you know, because mm -hmm. some people might like want to jump right into apartment syndications as an example. Other people are like, no, that's too overwhelming. Like I want to do flips. Um, so yeah, you got to kind of pick and choose what, what you want to do and you may want to do all of them like i do but you got you just have to focus 100 percent. 
Now, guys, before we dive into the steps on how to successfully do lease options in today's market, James, you contribute a lot of your success to your ability to be empathetic and, and connect with others. Why do you think this has played such a big role in your success? Well, you know, it's interesting because when I got into this, I thought, oh, it's just going to be spreadsheets and throwing out offers. And <laughs> I didn't realize how much of a people business this is, which was great because I I like chatting with people and getting to know them and and being human, you know, so and other people, you know, that's I think other people crave that, too. So and in, in what I'm doing. You know, I'm talking to other agents. I'm, you know, I partner with other agents and lenders, investors, and and our tenant buyers. You know, all those people, and and everybody's got you know different motivations and personalities. So, being able to kind of connect with people is is super important. Absolutely, hundred percent. And, and as many of our listeners out there know, the, the Nationwide Real Estate Mastery Podcast, it, it's a show that allows our guests to break down exactly what they do. And in the description of this episode, there's going to be a link for you to reach out to our guest speaker directly. So, James, let, let's go ahead and start breaking down those steps on how to successfully do lease options in today's market. And let's start off by explaining what is a lease option? What, I mean, what is that for folks out there to have no clue? Well, the common term is rent to own. So... Mm -hmm. A lease with an option to buy is kind of like our industry term for that. So that's kind of the basics. And, uh, you know, we're, we're helping people that cannot get financing that need to rent before they can get their own loan and buy. I love it. I, I love that strategy. Uh, do you do lease options strictly or do you do sandwich lease options or, or do you do a combination of both? Um, I'm not doing sandwich lease options, um, not working directly with sellers, okay. but, um, it is, it is a good strategy. Um, but yeah, we, we do it a little bit different. We, we call it reverse lease options. So okay. rather than finding a seller that is open and willing to sell on a lease option to an end buyer, we do it the other way around and we find a buyer first and make sure they're a good fit. And then we're actually working with investors and just go buy properties. Most of them that are on market on the MLS. Um, if they're off market, we can also put that together as well. As long as it's the property is a good fit for the tenant buyer that wants to buy a house. Reverse lease options. I like that. I like that term and I like that concept. So can you, if you, if someone was out here brand spanking new and they were wanting to get started, do you, do you need a lot of money to do lease options? I mean, what would be the first step on, on, on getting, you know, lease option business started? Well, the way we do it with our investors, we just need a, an, an investor that has the ability to put money down and get a loan. Um, even if they have the ability to pay all cash for a property, it makes more sense to leverage having a loan. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, having, having 20% down, like any kind of rental is a situation that, that is the best fit. So let me ask you this. Um, what is your strategy for uh, finding lease options, like as far as the, the down payment is concerned, do you advertise that? Or do you do you tell your your uh, potential buyers, tenant buyers, you say, "Hey, we need twenty percent down," or, or or do you give them a, a specific number, or, or how does that work? Well, there's some different ways of going about it. Our mm -hmm. our main thing is um, finding people that have around ten percent on the for the tenant buyer that they can can pay up front and that goes to the investor. So the investor immediately is getting cash right away, mm -hmm. um, which helps offset the 20% or more that they would have to put down for their loan. Nice. Nice. Yeah. And, and uh, are, are you uh, still like the landlord in this situation here or are, are the tenants, the landlord and you know, how does that work for someone who's wanting to rent to own? 
the the investor is the landlord yep so they've they buy the house and then they've got a lease with an option for that tenant to buy in the future okay so yeah and they they get all of the you know tax write-offs deductions um depreciation um because they are the owner the the tenant buyer is not the buyer until they exercise their option and get their own loan okay is yeah. there a transfer of deed um at the beginning of that deal or at the end uh, once they they decide to you know exercise the lease or the other uh, purchase purchase at, yeah at the end the the deed transfers okay. um you know we, we could get into seller financing or contract for deed mm -hmm. um I, I haven't done any of those but that's another option you know that, that does there is some equitable title transferred um to the tenant buyer that way okay. um and that you know for an investor that just doesn't want to ever get any calls from that tenant buyer and just be the bank that that is an option but they give up you know the deed and and the tax advantages of it as well so it's kind of a just depends on the investor so guys as you can see as james is saying it, it really just depends on what the investor strategy is and uh, and and what your creativity is because this is uh, something that you guys could really put together with uh creativity uh to make it work and what i mean by the creativity piece is um the down payment is i'm sure it could be flexible if the monthly payment let's say was adjusted or vice versa that that's what we mean by being creative or being flexible to make these deals um be really be a win-win for the whole community for everyone that's involved so um exactly. james let, let me ask you this what does your organization look like is it just you doing this or do you have a, a team helping you, you out yeah we've we've got a network of other business owners like myself so we're based in colorado okay. but you know we learned this from from uh, jesse mills in Minnesota. So he's our partner now. Um, and I actually help coach other people that come in and want to set up their own business in their market. And so that network is growing, um, which is cool because, you know, I may have a, a tenant buyer and not an investor. And so we can put the puzzle pieces together with other people that are, are in our group. Nice, nice. Jesse is a great guy, man. I, I utilize Jesse's uh, services as well to screen my tenants. So uh, oh, he's, great. A, he's a good guy. Good guy, man. Heck yeah. And, and in a small world, it's it's amazing how like uh, we all end up like knowing the same people. And uh, it's just a good industry to be in. Man. I love this industry, man. I, I love this industry. Yeah, me too. Um, so are you licensed? Do you, I mean, do you need a license to do these lease options? You don't but I've found it super valuable to be licensed um, for multiple reasons. Uh, I can pick up commissions. Um, I can do other, you know, regular real estate deals and help, help people buy and sell, um, which helps smooth out some of the bumps. And then, you know, it gives me credibility when talking to lenders and agents, credit repair people, just other people in the industry that, may run into a tenant buyer that would be a good fit for our program. Okay. And yeah. so, so with the reverse lease option strategy, are you, um, are you, are you basically like, you know, you, you're getting qualified tenant buyers and then you, you're having like a list of those buyers and then you'll go out and meet with investors to match them up. Does it take money to do that? Or, or is that something that you could do, you know, with, you know, fairly a, a limited budget? Oh yeah, it's it's very organic. Okay. Both in in finding the buyers, I, you know, we've we have marketed before, you know, put money behind some Facebook ads and, and we're going to start doing that again uh just to kind of open up more opportunities. But um as far as investors, investors it's more word of mouth mm -hmm. through, you know, podcasts like this and just, you know, getting out there telling people what we're doing. 
hundred percent, hundred percent. And speaking of that, guys, as a reminder, if at any point in this show you like what you're hearing, please give us a thumbs up or subscribe to the show that you so that you never miss an episode. It's your engagement that drives us to do this for the community for absolutely free. So, so James, um, let's see. We've got the we we figured out we we're, we're on the reverse wholesaling. We've We've locked up the the tenant buyers. We've got, you know, let's say a list of five or six, you know, five to 10, you know, qualified tenant buyers. We're out there finding investors. Now, how do we find the the properties? What what are you guys doing to to find those deals? Yeah, we simply let the tenant buyers pick anything off the MLS that fits, you know, what they want. Nice, nice. Okay. Okay. That that's a nice yeah. stra- that's a nice strategy. So, so is, you're you're playing like the matchmaker, so to speak. Yep, yeah, we're putting the deals together. And if these deals being on the MLS are are you know, I know that you're saying that you do reach out to investors, but with the deals that are on the MLS, are you um, do you have to make an offer? Being that they're you know with an agent, how did how would you do that? How would how would someone you know put out a lease option versus just you know buying that 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 deal? How do you do that? Well, yeah, we're just our investor. We make an offer on behalf of the investor for that on market property. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yes. So w- when you do make that offer, I mean, are you telling that in, that buy, that uh, seller that you're going to lease the property for a few years and then buy it, or are you buying it like kind of up front with your investor and then putting the tenant buyer in to lease it? Yeah, we've we've basically got the lease and the option agreement all figured out ahead of time. Okay. We make an offer to that seller, and you know we may or may not tell that seller what we're doing. It doesn't really matter to them. They just want to sell their house. Right. Sure. Um, so, um, yeah, that's, that's basically what we do. So guys, ba- what I'm trying to um, help the audience here is that there's, there's really nothing that should stop you guys. After you listen to this episode, you should be able to go out there Start doing the some of the things that James is talking about, which is finding qualified buyers. Uh, you might not do it as organic as James does as, as doing it because of you, you, might, you might be brand spanking new. But you know, if someone is brand new, how would they would they get some buyers? Do they put ads out on Craigslist or Facebook? What do they do to let people know that yeah. they could help them out? Yeah, that's totally a way. I mean, I just talked to a guy that's putting like bandit signs out and finding buyers. Um, there's many different ways. Like, like I said before, we, we have run ads before, Mm -hmm. but you have to sift through a lot of people that, you know, have no money to put down. They have no credit. Their job history is terrible. Like just, they're not going to be a fit. So it's kind of a numbers game. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're going to start doing that again, but it seems like we find the, the quality ones through relationships. So Man, this, that's awesome. That is awesome. I, I really like that. I, I like how you guys are, are really or, a relationship oriented. And um, since I was talking to you, even before we, we we started the podcast, you know, you let me know that this is something that um, that's a win win for the whole community. And I keep speaking about the win win part of it, because that's what you shoot for in business. Um, who's winning? If you guys are wondering, the tenant buyer, they're winning because they, they're getting a property that they probably wouldn't have gotten the traditional route. Most folks can't go out and qualify tr- for a traditional loan, re- regardless of um, you know how good their credit is. There's sometimes there's just a number of different factors that prevent them from being able to get that home today. So people like us, me and James, we come in place and we help those people, and um, that's a win. You know what else is a win? That seller who needs to get out of that property for whatever reason, you're helping them out. You know who else is winning? Your buyers, your investors, like James is saying, when he connects his investors, everyone is happy. The community is happy because they have a a tenant buyer in place, not just a renter. And I'm not knocking renters. There's nothing wrong with being a renter or renting a property, but uh, the community for property values, the other homeowners can appreciate that. So everyone is happy. You're a hero in everyone's eyes. People want to refer you. And it's a great business model and, and a great business method. Yeah. And I'll add, there's two other wins. Yeah. Let's, let's, you know, it. if an agent, another agent brings up, brings somebody and we put this deal together, you know, normally they would, wouldn't get any, anything. They'd have to put them on a drip, you know, and keep calling them and maybe send them to credit repair and, 
and just wait and, and hope that eventually they become a, a buyer. Um, in this way, we can get them paid commission and they can move on. Um, and then lenders, lenders have somebody they've gotten into a property mm-hmm. that are very motivated to get a loan in the future. They're not just like, you know, sitting around um, working on things to, that they need to fix. Like they, they're super motivated to fix credit or, mm-hmm. you know, stick with their, their, their job, or maybe they're self-employed and they need a full two years. So um, that's one in the pipeline for the lender. And then also the lender can do the loan for the investor and, and that they can get multiple because, you know, we have investors that will do, you know, two of these at a time or more. And then when the buyers come around, you know, in a year or two or three and, and buy that, that place, then they're like, oh, hey, let's do it again and get into another lease option. Um, so like one investor can be multiple deals for a lender. So it's a, a lot of wins there. Indeed, indeed. I, I really like those. You, and you because we can't leave out the agents and the lenders. You're right. A hundred percent. hundred percent. So uh, so let me ask you this. Let's say if the end of the lease comes and, and that you know, the, the tenant that's in there says, Hey, you know what, James, I really appreciate you helping me out. We, we wanted this house, but we're moving cross country. We found a new opportunity to work halfway across the country. And this just isn't going to work out for us. What happens at that point? Yeah, it's, there's a lot of different things we can do. Um, so ideally we, they're not moving and bailing on the house that they picked out. Like we want to make sure that that they want to stay in the, the state, just keep their jobs and, and pick that house and, and stay in it. And, you know, if they've come to the end of their option, we can always extend it, you know, as long as they've been paying their, their rent, mm-hmm. like any investor that's got a regular rental, they're super happy to have people that are staying in the property and, and continuing to pay rent. rent. So that's kind of the first step, just extend it. And, you know, it's kind of up to the investor whether they do that for free or um, maybe charge a, a small fee to for the privilege of extending past the originally agreed upon uh, time. So, but it is a non-refundable option consideration. Mm-hmm. So um, they have to realize that it's in the agreement that the investor would keep that money. Um, so we don't want that to happen, you know, so that that's why, you know, one of the main things with rent to own that we do that most of the other companies don't do is build in a relationship and a process with a lender to figure out why they can't qualify now and what it is going to take for them to get a loan in the future. Mm -hmm. So you know, ideally it's just time, like self-employed people, like most of us in the real estate industry are (laughs) Mm -hmm. like, we've had tenant buyers that were agents, you know, that like our first deal was a really cool one where uh, the agent wanted to buy a duplex, but couldn't because he didn't have a full two years as an agent. And so this was uh, in Minnesota, our investor from Colorado bought this duplex for him and within a year and a half he was able to buy it and and also his uh his fiance um they went out and bought a single family as well and then just turned that duplex into two rentals like so within a year and a half he was had his own primary and two doors that he was renting out so that was really uh, that was one of my favorite stories that was our first one Nice, nice. Yep. Guys, I want to back it up really quickly, guys. Uh, James mentioned something uh, twice here, and I, and I want to make sure I point it out because uh, he did uh, correct it later, um, and, and I, we both said it earlier. Um, it's not 20% down payment. We're not looking for a down payment. We're looking for a, a, you know, a 20% option. It's called a non-refundable option fee. Now, what when we, you know, when you market that, you can use wording that's totally different. But um, when you're actually speaking with with the per, the, the you know, your your 
qualified tenant buyer and you have them sign documentation, it's going to read in that documentation. You're going to verbalize it and make it very clear that it's non-refundable, but it can be applied towards the purchase of the price should you, should you exercise the option to purchase at the end of that lease. So um, so that's important, guys. Um, it's an option fee, non-refundable. And what James said is, is huge. We don't want folks walking away. So I don't want you guys out there thinking to yourself, like, I, I, I wish they would. I hope they walk away. No, you don't want that. We want them to execute on that lease and on that purchase. However, if they do, for whatever reason, that is a non-refundable option fee. What we would do is we put another qualified tenant buyer in place. Would, would that, you know, would that be ultimately what you guys would do, James? If someone were to just have to move out of state and they did, they couldn't extend yeah. or anything. Yeah, yeah, they'd have to walk away from it. Um, right. Yeah, and for the investor, they have all the options you have with any kind of rental. You know, mm -hmm. ideally, put a, a good tenant buyer back in it that's going to buy. Or turn it into a regular rental or short-term rental or mid-term rental or or just sell it. Um, it's it's up to the the investor at that point. James, do, do you have a do you have virtual assistants? I mean, do you have a team like um like a of a cold callers? How how do you guys operate? I don't right now. I just my partner Toby and I handle everything. Okay. Um, I do have a virtual assistant helping with some some things not really related to this side of the business. Okay. Um, but that is where we're heading for sure. Um, we'll probably like Jesse's got a, a tenant buyer specialist. In fact, the, the guy I mentioned before that bought the duplex, since he went through the program and was an agent, he really understood it from the tenant buyer side. So he became Jesse's tenant buyer specialist. Um, and then he's, you know, had a investor specialist. So that's, that's where we're heading for sure. As we scale up and, and can't handle it all ourselves. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. So, so um, let me ask you this. What's your biggest, why, why, why do you do this? What, what, what keeps you going every day? Well, a couple things. I mean, on the personal level, I don't want to be poor and I want to be, <laughs> be able to, to be financially free and and uh, and be able to you know spend my time however I want, like most people, right? Um, but then on the other side, just helping people, like like the guy I mentioned, and with like a family in from Honduras, we helped get into a, a house in Florida. Another great one, like they they were I ten buyers, which is a, a term where they don't have a social security number. Mm. Um, so like helping people like that mm -hmm. uh, and, and investors get to their, their goals. Like that, that brings me a lot of joy and, uh, yeah. Nice. Nice. I love it, man. Um, are you using any special tools or, or CRMs, your customer relationship management tools, or are you, you know, keeping this in a spreadsheet? How, how are you guys operating? Yeah. In fact, we're kind of doing a refresh, getting, uh, multiple things kind of into one system. Um, so I'm excited about that because it was kind of disparate systems uh, that worked, but we're really refining things. And I, I'm excited to be able to share that with other people that, you know, go through our program and, and want to do what we're doing. They can just kind of just jump in and, and have everything ready to go. Nice. Nice. But yeah, systems are super important. And, and procedures too. Like I, I'm always having to like steer myself into the, the proper, you know, procedure. So it's not, I'm not winging it every time, you know? So, you know, we've, we've got questions that we ask every tenant buyer and okay. need to make, make sure we follow that and get all the, the correct information up front. So things like that is, that's super important for any business, especially this one. Got it. Got it. So let me ask you something, man. What do you think life would be like if you were still, you know, working at, in your past career and you had never found real estate? How do you think things would be looking right now? <laughs> yeah, I'd just still be grinding away. You know, it's, it's interesting because I got a buddy that uh, he was also a graphic designer and still is. We were both sitting around probably, I don't know, 10 years ago. Going, do we really want to 
have to have to be doing this when we're 65 or whatever, you know, with no retirement situation on the horizon. And I was like, I got to do something. So I, I can't imagine being stuck in that. Man, uh, you, you have been very transparent uh, doing this interview, and I appreciate that. You know, a lot of folks might not speak on things like that. Um, you know, speaking in that same realm, what's been your biggest lesson that, that you've learned with the real estate business so far? Getting focused. Definitely. Okay. Like we talked about that before, find, finding your your focus, your niche. I, mean, I could go on with other things that are critical, too. <laughs> Indeed, indeed. Okay. Well, well, James, we have made it to what I like to call the rapid fire session. This is where I ask you a question and then you just tell me the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. All right. On a scale of one to 10, how strict were your parents? Oh, seven. Okay. Get up early or stay up late? I'm a total night owl. <laughs> <laughs> How many hours of sleep do you get each night? Oh, I do best on like eight, but I d don't always get that. Okay. Favorite or last book read? I just finished um, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. That was just kind of a fun one. Okay. That was a, that was an interesting story written by her when she was 19. It's incredible. I couldn't believe it. Awesome, man. If you could be any superhero, who would it be? Oh, shoot. Probably Superman. I would love to fly. I'm a total adren adrenaline junkie. So okay. <laughs> getting off the ground would be uh, awesome. Something everyone should do less of. wine something that they everyone, make excuses <laughs> something that everyone should do more of work on their mindset ai technology scary or the way of the future it's the way of the future if you had one wish james what would it be wish everybody was be a little bit more happy love it man i love it James, man, do you think people are going to live on Mars in your lifetime? <laughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, no. Okay, okay. James, man, do you have any final thoughts that you'd like to share with our listeners out there before we wrap things up? And how can our audience reach you to get more information on what you do? Yeah, if you're uh, looking to get into real estate investing, just work on your mindset and keep focused. That's uh that's the biggest key. Don't like, just don't give up because it's, there's a lot of barriers, but if I can do it, anybody can do it. Um, and if anybody wants to reach out, um, if you're interested in investing, you could go to uh hybrid real estate or actually hybrid investor.vip um, or find me on uh, Facebook or Instagram. Nice, nice. And I'll be sure to put a link uh, for James in the description as well. Man, James, brother, I, I want to thank you so much for coming on and sharing so much valuable information into the, le the lease option and the reverse lease option strategy. Thank you so much, man. Awesome. Thanks, Sean. Absolutely. And to my listeners out there, you guys have made it to the end of the show. So give yourselves a pat on the back because most people never finish what they start. And you just did. Now, if you got any value out of today's show, please share it with a friend on your Facebook page, like the video, subscribe to our channel, and send us topics that you want to learn more about. So until the next episode, you can catch me on any one of my social media platforms. I'll catch you guys on the other side. With this crown on my head, I'm seated on the throne. The top is so alone. Only thing that keeps me going is I know my city love me. I know my city love me. I know my city love me. I know my city love me.